Hey, what's going on, my friends? It's Dave Sharp. Welcome to Wake Up Legendary. And uh, we have a four-time returning guest on this morning. Yeah, you heard that right, four-time. Uh, we love to be able to welcome people back to the show to hear about their journey, to get updates on uh, you know, how they've been doing, what's been going on, what's new in their business, what are they trying, what's working, what's not. Um, how mm -hmm. they succeeded, how they failed, all the things that uh, this wild journey of entrepreneurship uh, provides for us. Uh, the ups, the downs, the all arounds. Up, uh, oh, there's my text message reminder that we just went live. If you want a text message reminder, you can text WUL to 813-296-8553. Uh, and we will send you a nice little text message at 10 a.m. Eastern time when we go live here. Uh, and you can just click a link and come on over and watch us live. With that being said, let's get into it. Amy Hires, welcome to the show. Welcome Good back. Morning. To the show. How y'all doing? Good morning. Good to see you again, my friend. Me too. Good to be in the kitchen with you. Thank you. <laughs> you know? I moved my desk downstairs and um, just to kind of put me in the center of the action in the house, you know, me and Rodney, we're, we're the only ones in the house, but that's where the action is. So oh, of, course. <laughs> of course, of course, I, I get it. So um, last time you were on was uh, September 17th of last year. You were joined by your wonderful husband, Rodney. Um, right. So what's, uh, what's happened since then? Talk, bring us up to speed in terms of you know, what you've been working on, what's, what are you excited about and what have you learned over the past nine months or so? Well, um, I, I really have had a slowdown in my business over the last nine months, but it's a good thing. <laughs> I know you're like, well, how's that a good thing? What it has done is caused me to look into other things that I learned, like in the blueprints, we didn't just learn about affiliate marketing. So, I've been investigating and researching and working on the digital products end of it. Um, I did work on an event with a couple with a few friends last year. So that, that was an, another thing that we had learned in the blueprints, but just, I, I, I don't know when things are going smooth, smooth sailing. I, I just find that I wasn't, I wasn't growing. I wasn't learning anything new. It was only when things got rough that I said, okay, I got to see what else I can do, what else I can learn. I'm going to keep on the path that I'm on, but I'm just going to add to it and learn other things. So yeah. that's, that's what I've been doing is getting back into the training and, and seeing where, what other direction I can add to what I'm already doing. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's exactly why selling information has four essential core ways to sell it. You, right. There's so many different things that you can do. Um, t take for those who don't know your, your story, uh, why did you get into this in the first place? I was in, um, direct sales for over 20 years and I can't begin to describe how burned out I was with it. I just was so tired of it. And, um, but I wanted to be an entrepreneur really badly. I, I always wanted to work for myself. I had grown up watching my dad work for himself and that's just what I wanted. And so I was looking for a way to be able to stay home. If I had any kids, that, that was my thought process growing up. And I did, I found a direct sales business. It was a really good one, but I honestly never just had a true passion for it. And then when the pandemic came along, oops, am I supposed to say that? That's okay. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and that came along in 2020, it put a complete halt to my direct sales business. And I, honestly, I was so happy about that. I was so glad. It's like, ah, anything to get me out of it. So um, I started looking online for other ways to make money online. And honestly, I was looking at digital products first. That was a course that I took in the summer of 2021 was about creating digital products and how it was going to be a huge thing. It was going to be a boom in business. It was, it was really growing. And, um, but in the process of look, looking at that, I came across a TikTok video of a girl talking about making money online. And I was, like, oh, I guess I'll look into that. So that's what brought me to Legendary. And I wasn't looking. I didn't really even know anything about affiliate marketing. I just mm -hmm. knew I was 
tired of the rut that I felt like I was in. I wasn't making very much money with the direct sales business, especially after that mega life event in uh, 2020. So I was very excited to just try something new. And I jumped in and I started having success. And what's really awesome is I had the success, but then it slowed down. It would pick back up and it would slow down. And I just realized this is an opportunity for me to take what I have learned. Like I said, I'm repeating myself, but it's an opportunity for me to do something else. And yeah. so um, I didn't, I, there were moments of discouragement, but um, overall it's just an excitement that, Hey, there's more that I can do. There's more, um, there's more ways to make money online and I'm excited to, to get into it. So that's where I've been for the last six, nine months is just learning um, ways to expand, mm -hmm. just learning ways to, to pivot, you know? Yeah. yeah. And well, you have to, I mean, you know, online, any business, you have to be flexible. You can't be right. rigid. You know, you can't be too, you can't, you can't, you can't be a one trick pony. You know, right. you have to be, you have to be flexible. You have to be dynamic. And you have to know how to have multiple things going on or multiple things in the works at all times. For example, let's talk about um, multiple streams of traffic. Talk to us about your experience of having the, the importance of having being having done this now for four years online, roughly, I think, uh, for, for you. I think it's been three to four years. Two you, okay, two and a half. I'm sorry. Um, still probably feels like four sometimes, yeah. um, you, you know, you've had, uh, you've lost accounts, you've had accounts slow down, you've had things, um, not be as popular anymore. You've had all of the ups and downs you've rode the, the, you've had the ebbs, you've had the flows. Talk to us about looking back over the last two and a half years. What have you learned about how to best protect yourself, protect your multiple streams of, of traffic? And I say multiple streams of traffic because most people talk about multiple streams of income, but yeah. the way to have multiple streams of income online is you need to have multiple streams of traffic, right? So yeah. those that's the lifeblood of any business, right? That means multiple social media platforms, may even mean so multiple accounts on each platform, means an email list, means as many different things as you can have that you can drive traffic into whatever you are selling at that moment. Talk to us about your experience with that. And what have you learned? What would you advise yourself if you could go back two and a half years ago uh, and, and give yourself a piece of advice about multiple streams of traffic? One of the things that I did in the very beginning was I got everything set up. You know, I went through the decade in the day training. I got everything set up and it was a process. You know, I didn't know anything about sales funnels, email, autoresponders, any of that. So I got it all set up and then I was scared to touch it. I mean, like 2021 turned into 2022 and I needed to get in there and change the year. And I was like, don't touch my funnel. You know, I was just afraid if I screwed with it, I was going to like, it wouldn't work anymore. So I even bought the 15 day challenge from myself a couple of times just to make sure it was still working. I was so freaking paranoid that I didn't know because I didn't know how to work this funnel very well. I had gotten it set up, but after that, I was like, all right, let's leave it alone. And so I was kind of on that one trick pony mindset, like you just mentioned for a while, because I was like, I got this one product. I got this one TikTok account. I got this. I mean, this is my path. This is all I'm doing. And so I didn't reach out or branch out into Facebook or Instagram for months and months. And um, I didn't update my emails like I was supposed to. So I'm talking to anybody who's new, like you've, we've heard this before. It's absolutely true that the emails are, that's your golden ticket. That's your golden ticket. You, you've got to be um, writing those emails and updating them and, and making sure that you're communicating with with your people, your audience. And I just was on a path of, I guess, just fear like, oh gosh, this is working. This is working. So we're not going to do anything different. We're just going to leave it alone. Um, but then when I had those slow down times, that's when I was like, okay, I gotta, I gotta try Instagram. I gotta do Facebook. So what I actually ended up doing on TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram is 
creating multiple accounts on there. Like I have five or six different accounts on Instagram right now. Um, two or three on TikTok, just one on Facebook. But I just said I'm going to maybe test my content on different accounts and just see what's working better. And of course, I got in, into the emails and started, you know, working with those the way I was supposed to. So it was kind of like paralyzation fear. It just caused me to be paralyzed. And I wasn't, um, I wasn't doing everything that I needed to do. And so I know that part of the slowdown in my business happened because I was stuck. I was stuck. So um, not only did getting other social media accounts help and getting different accounts on those social media accounts, but um, also branching out to different products, not just one um, offer. Legendary Marketer is my first offer. It's my primary offer. Um, but then adding adding other services and softwares, things like that, it just made a made a big difference in the income, especially those that have recurring monthly income, like mm -hmm. ClickFunnels, AWeber, those kinds of things is just a, a good portion of income for me has come from having those recurring incomes. Yeah. Yeah. No. And, and what did you what did you realize about your funnel that that now? Did you realize that you, it wasn't, it's like a baby, right? Your first baby, you know, you, you have people with, with five, six kids, even multiple, you know, two or three will tell you this, you know, that first baby comes out and you just, you know, it's just, oh my God, I might break it. Then by the second or third or fourth, it's kind of like, Hey, take the baby, throw yeah. it, realizing yeah. that it's, is, is that your experience too with yes. the funnel yes. and the technology? The funnel is not as scary as we think it is in the beginning. And I remember getting some help with Drew in the very beginning of my business. And he was on the computer and I was watching him. Here's, here's basically what he was doing. I was like, I have a question about, you know, the funnel and, and Drew and this, this, this. And he's like, okay, well, just go to that button in the top right uh, corner and then uh, click on uh, activate or whatever the word. He just, he was just like doing it without looking at it. And I was like, and he's that's like, I wish I, I knew it that well that I don't even need to look at the screen to tell somebody what to click on. And I was like, I've got to uh, get to the point that I am just comfortable with this. So I built funnels just for fun, mm. just to get that in there, uh, get that in my head that, hey, this is not really a scary thing. It's really yeah. not. And I can make a change on my funnel and not screw everything up. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know who else feels that way, but it's um well, a lot of people. I mean, the yeah. the, the comments are are coming in just a, around that specific talk, topic. Talk to us a little bit about also getting more comfortable on camera. You know, you're somebody who went live for a long time. I don't know if you're still doing lives the way that you did at the beginning, but um, talk to us a little bit about your your comfortability, what you've learned about getting in front of the camera. The, the next thing I want to talk about is I want to talk about your emails because, I mean, you're getting some comments about uh, Melissa said, love getting your emails. They have inspired me to dive back into writing content again. Let's talk about let's talk about video. Let's talk about email, about the evolution of you getting good, comfortable. And what, what does that look like so people can identify with it, you know, be careful, everybody. Don't compare your step one to her step 210. Right. But talk about your step one and, 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 and lead us up to your step, whatever you're on right now and how that's evolved. Let's start with video first. Okay. Um, I was shy and introverted growing up, um, but nobody knew it. Nobody knew it because my mom would kind of push me out and say, go speak to her, go speak to him. So it was just kind of something instilled in me that do it scared, do mm -hmm. it anyway. And so I, um, when I started this business, well, in direct sales, I was forced to, you know, do it scared to get, I had to do presentations and that was, I hated it. I hated it. But then when I started this business, um, Matt said, do a live stream. You should, you should do a live stream. And I was like, okay, as soon as I get a thousand followers, I'll do one. And so my strategy was you just push record. You just, just push the live button, mm. figure out what to say after that. And that was from a tactic that I learned in direct sales. It's like, I had to 
walk up and talk to people in my direct sales business, strangers, that kind Anybody of Anybody within three feet. Uh, yes, the three foot rule, which I hated that freaking three foot rule. <laughs> Um, anybody within three feet, you're supposed to walk up and give them your business card. And oh my gosh, I would bite my nails and stuff like that. But I learned this tactic that I would just go, excuse me. I would like see somebody and then I'd go, excuse me. And then they'd turn around and I'd have to say something or I'd mm. look like a freaking idiot. So I'd be like, excuse me. And then it would just like put me, force me to say the rest. So I'm like, I'm going to hit the live stream button and I'm just going to start talking. And I remember the look on my face from that verse live stream. It was just like, <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Amy, you know, um, but it just got, it just got easy. It, honest to God, it gets easier. You start mm -hmm. thinking about how many people are on the internet and how different they are and how few people really care mm. you know, about what you look like, what you sound like. I have people, you know, mention, well, uh, you know, my accent or something. And it's like, nobody cares. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. So um, that that's one thing I just want to say, do it scared. And mm -hmm. then it get to be where it's not scary, scary anymore. It really will. Yeah. Um, and if, if, you know, being on camera, being in a video, being on a live stream, is just something that is like a mega, mega problem for anyone. Like as, if, if there's any problem you have that you can take action for, then you don't have a problem. If, if mm -hmm. some kind of action will solve that, then you don't have a problem. You just have to do the action. So live streams have turned out to be a huge um, plus in my business. I don't do them as much as I was doing them, but I still do them every week. Okay. So talk to us about your writing and, and your emails and how has that, how has that skill improved? How has, what has that, what, what has that journey been like with writing in, and how have you built a relationship or even felt the connection for you to stay consistent when you're writing to people that you're not seeing? I mean, it's kind of like being on video, right? I mean, yeah. but it's even more weird because you can't see comments unless people respond back to you. Right. How have you stayed consistent? What has your uh, journey been like with building your list and, and building a, and emailing and building a relationship with those people on your list? Well, I made a mistake that I hope um, that I keep a lot of you from making, which was I had my email campaign, which had like 20 something emails in it. And then I was not following. I did not. There was a time I did not follow up with anybody on that list. Why? 20 or 20,000. I had like an email campaign of about 20 emails. Okay. Got it. And once those finished, I wasn't doing the, the newsletters or the broadcast consistently. And so when I got back, when I realized I was like, dang it, these people haven't heard from me, mm. you know, what a mistake, what an idiot, you know, and I, part of it was from listening to you, Dave, talk about how your email list is just, it was you were on a wake up legendary just talking about the email list. I was like, I have screwed up there. I have screwed up. So I started contacting my email list again with the first email was simply, are you still interested in making money? And um, I had a lot of people respond. I had a lot of people um, unsubscribe. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't blame you. I don't blame you for unsubscribing with me. Um, mm -hmm. I neglected my audience for a while. I really did. And I and really encourage all of you not to do that. Um, I had to stop paying attention to how many people unsubscribed and remember that they were never going to purchase from me anyway. <laughs> um, and just just work on the people who were focus on what you want instead of what's not going well. Mm. Have to focus on what's going right instead of what's not going well. So I've gotten a lot better about the emails and just writing from the heart. And just being myself, I am not, um, when my husband knew me from a long time ago, back before we got married, and I've just come across, I've been told as this prim and proper girl that, you know, I'll just leave it at that, just prim and proper. And I'm like, the, the truth is, I'm just, I'm a, I'm a cut up and a goofball. And I'm like, I'm just going to start being myself mm. in my emails. I'm just going to write my thoughts, my feelings. I'm not going to try to make it all perfect, you know, and, um, and I think that that's helped too. It just makes 
people more relatable. Because when I get emails like that, like from Mel Robbins, I don't know if y'all get emails from Mel Robbins, but when I get something from her, I'm like, that girl, I feel like I know her. Mm. I feel like we are friends. And that's the way I want people to feel with me. I really, really want people to feel like, oh, she's just like a friend. Like if we lived in the same town, we'd hang out. That's mm. what I want people to feel like when they get emails from me. And 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 so what 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 is that what does that look like? What what is you brought up Mel there and talk to us about your emails as well. What does that look like to write something that makes somebody feel like they know you and would want to sit down and have a cup of coffee with you. Can, can you give some examples? Like, can you say more about that? So new people can maybe try to avoid some of the robotic and or kind of scripted and or kind of copy and paste or some of the same, some of the things that you hear from everybody and, and they can make it more of their own. What what yeah. does that look like? Well, yesterday I sent out, a, I believe it's yesterday, I sent out an email and I had the wrong link attached to my picture. So um, I got a question from one of my email subscribers about like, hey, this is not, I'm like, oh, shoot. So I immediately wrote another email and I, my title was, crap, I screwed up or something like that. It was just mm -hmm. Real, just real, like, oh, shoot, I screwed up. And then they get in there and they see I and I just I just talk like I'm talking to you right now. I sent you an email earlier. I put the wrong link with it. Here's the right one. Sorry about that. I just I just talk like we're talking. Yeah, and, Um. I'm, I don't. It's too much energy to try to be somebody you're not. So I'm, I'm not going to try to be the um, the literary queen or anything like that. I'm yeah. I just, just want to be real. I just want to be real. So I, my, my emails are the subject lines. I try to grab attention like with things like, like, oh, crap, I messed up or mm. um, I, I can't think I'm of another. Exposing thing. yourself, right? Like not portraying a perfect image, but right. instead, like really, yeah, like, and that's a great, that's a great headline because what, what people don't particularly want, but they can't really look away from is like people messing up and making mistakes and ha having accidents. It's sort of like driving down the road and there's a car crash. You, you don't wish that on anybody, right. but you can't not look right. Sure. Um, it's sort of like a dumpster fire, you know, it's like in, right. in whether that's an analogy for somebody's life or whether, you know, it's just, God, I can't, I just gotta see, I just, yeah, I <laughs> know just what's the, what's going on, you know? Right. So it's like, oh, shoot, I messed up or a oh, big mistake I made last week yeah. or huge mistake I made in my business or avoid this at all costs. Right. Or any of those sort of those are great marketing hooks. Right. If you're, if you're teaching, training, talking about any topic it doesn't just have to be online marketing. It could be training your dog. It could be losing weight. All of those topics would that headline would apply yeah. um, and, and then actually talking about your failures your challenges talking about things you know self-deprecating humor do you use that I do. fun of self i do i mean if i don't do it somebody's going to so i might yeah. as well, i might as well start it um yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm all for that yeah i, I think like, we're, I like we're things lighthearted. Yeah. And I think that that's one way that both seriously and lighthearted, I've taken people's power away in my career is that <clears throat> I expose myself, talk about all my past failures, screw ups. I mean, everything from being homeless and, and addicted to, you know, high school dropout to here's how I screwed up last month. Here's a mistake I made in my this relationship and that business. Um, learn from it, you know, because. It was not fun going through it, you know, and maybe if this can help a couple of people avoid that, then it's it's yeah. worth sharing the embarrassment. Um, and, and we learn to both share things that are serious and take that kind of fear of, oh, my God, what if people find this out about me? As well as, you know, a, a, a lady the other day 
at a birthday party asked me because she knows that I've done a lot of speaking. Oh, I'm, I'm going to make a presentation. You know, would you give me some tips? And I said, I said, look, um, you know, expose yourself early and often and not in the way that you may you know, think that sounds weird. But what I mean is, is that don't go in to the room and try to be the top dog from the front of the room, even if you are the top dog, but especially if you're not. Right. Hey, I, look, I, I've been a boss before. I've been a manager and she had, but she was now starting off in a different department lower on the totem pole. Um, and I'm a little uncomfortable sitting up here in front of you right now talking, you know, um, I'm growing right in front of you right now because yeah. I know this is what I'm going to have to do to, and it's what I've done in my career over and over again to get on top to succeed, to help myself win in this company and help everybody else win in this company. So I'm uncomfortable. I'm awkward. I'm nervous this morning. Bear with me, right? Yeah. Root me on. All laughter and, 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 and ovations, standing applause, they're all welcome. Bring all the love on because I'm going to need it this morning as I deliver this presentation to you. Is everybody ready to get into this, right? And, and just, you know, like bond with your audience through not try letting them know you're not even going to try to be perfect because you already know that you're not perfect. You did a lot of that on, on your lives or you do a lot of that on your lives. Talk to us a little bit about the power of going live. How did that help you to develop your skills and in, in bonding with audience? What did that do for your business? Well, that was one of the best things that I've ever done was do live streams because I did exactly what you said. I did not try to be um, somebody I wasn't. Like I remember sitting there. I've had I've had a nosebleed issue, and it's been going on for years. But I, I think I got it fixed yesterday. Actually, I was like, I gotta get it fixed before Tuesday. Or, <laughs> you know, but uh, one of my live streams, I'm sitting there like this. And I'm like, I'm talking on the live stream and they're like, you're still here. I can't believe you're still here. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm here to talk to you about this making money online thing. I'm so excited about it. But I mean, I was on twice a day. I was on live stream twice a day. So, and I had, oh gosh, did you see that? No. Do we got some blood? Oh, you do have a... Shoot. Crap, um, I got it fixed yesterday for y'all. I'm sorry, y'all. You poor thing. I'm so sorry. Um, I oh. had I am I'm sorry. I should never no. have touched it. All right, well, we're gonna sit here like this. No, if we need to end, Amy, we can. We can do a follow-up. It's okay. Look, it quit. <laughs> Talk about something and it dad gum started again. I literally got it fixed yesterday. My husband's probably on here going, oh man. Anyway, my point is to just be yourself, be on, be on, be on camera, be yourself. If look, I'm 57 years old. Okay. I feel like I should be further ahead in life than I am right now. That's, that's what I've been feeling. I feel like I should be further along, but you know what? There's a ton of other people who feel that way too. Yeah. And I just get on there and I'd be real. I had a lot of screw ups with money. I, I, you know, had a lot of financial issues. You don't have to tell your dirty laundry, but be relatable to people. I did get it cauterized about five times. <laughs> anyway, um, you, you just have to, you don't have to tell your dirty laundry, but you do have to be relatable and tell people I'm not perfect. Don't compare yourself to me. It, it, you know, I, I'm not, um, I'm not doing anything that anyone else can't do. I just am not doing anything else that anyone else can't do. Yeah. Anything. So sorry, that sound. Um, well, my, my friend, you are a wild inspiration. I mean, I have known you now for a couple of years and um, it is just a pleasure to see you. Um, you know, continue to grow right in front of us, you know, and evolve your business and yourself. And I am just, you know, so honored to know you um, and and your husband, your wonderful, beautiful 
a handsome man of a husband. We love Rodney. Um, let, let him go and take care of you. And um, we will look forward to having a fifth follow-up uh, episode with you here in the very near future and continue to learn from you. And uh, you go take care of that, that beautiful little nose of yours. Um, and, uh, and, and I will bl continue to blow. It's coming. It's coming, girl. It's coming. You need to go, you need to go back and get a refund on whatever they did yesterday. Uh, because, uh, because, uh, here we are, you jinxed yourself. I, so, did. I, I mean, I was zapped yesterday. I was like, we're good. Yeah. You jinxed yourself by saying that it's all, that it's all fixed. So, um, all right, my friend, listen, go take care of yourself. We will look forward to having you back on the show in the very near future. Thank you for being, uh, an amazing guest and hanging in there. I know you would have gone another hour with us here because you're such a rock star. But um, you go take care of yourself, and I'll talk to you real soon, okay? okay. Stay legendary. Sorry, y'all. Have a good one. Bye-bye. All right, my friends. Uh, you can find – let me put Amy's uh, – you can go keep, keep up with her um, with her uh, um, her nose bleeding um, journey uh, over on her, um, on her profiles, as well as continue to learn and be inspired by her at Make Money With Amy Online. That's TikTok and Instagram, okay? And um, some of the things that she said just in this episode this morning were absolutely, absolute gold. I mean, I was so dialed in that I, I didn't give her the hat throws that she deserves. But my Lord, this woman has um, been on the show now four times in each and every time I see her. She's, you know, she's growing in the self-awareness that she has about evolving her business and, and evolving herself is um, just extraordinary, you know, which just goes to show that this is not just a journey about growing your bank account. It's also a journey about growing your yourself. And she's certainly doing that and done that. And so with that being said, my friends, we'll be back here tomorrow for another episode as always. If you want to get a text message reminder when we go live, you can text WUL to 813-296-8553. And, um, and if you want to get started with our challenge or our blueprints or come to a mastermind, you can go to legendarymarketer.com forward slash enroll. With that being said, um, let's send our, uh, our prayers and uh, best um, energy to Amy and her doctor. Uh, to fix that nose all up, but I can guarantee you that she'll be keeping you posted on her uh, socials as to how that's going and just continuing to be as real as they get. So make sure that you go over and follow her on TikTok and Instagram at Make Money with Amy Online. And with that being said, my friends, have a great day. Stay legendary. Get out of here, and we'll be back here tomorrow for another episode. Peace.